Four years have passed since the mortal races banded together and stood united against the might of the Burning Legion. Though Azeroth was saved, the tenuous pact between the Horde and the Alliance has all but evaporated. The drums of war thunder once again. World of Warcraft, or WoW, is a Guinness World Record winning real-time strategy MMORPG. It was created and published by Blizzard Entertainment in 2004 and revolves around two factions, the Horde and the Alliance, to battle each other. In 2005, it was faced with its first major software problem to later be known as the Corrupted Blood Plague. This unexpected bug problem was from a transmittable and infectious debuff called Corrupted Blood, which unintentionally became a large-scale virtual pandemic. It was casted by the boss Halar the Souffleur and the 20-player dungeon raid of Zulgarab. Players would purposely contract the transmittable debuff and suffer large steady damage in order to defeat Souffleur. Now, it was intended to fade from the players and allow them to safely teleport back into the regular Warcraft realm. But Blizzard's chief of staff, Shane Debris, said that the designers forgot to set a code that cleared the debuff from Hunter's Pets and Warlock's minions, allowing those that were dismissed during combat and summoned again once out of the dungeon to quickly infect and spread corrupted blood. Now, it mimicked that of a real-life virus as it spread from player to player as well as to NPCs in highly populated cities and beyond. This wreaked extreme havoc where almost 4 million individuals were affected and skeletons littered the cities. Surprisingly, this caught the attention of epidemiologist Nina Pfefferman as well as many others to use as a case study to research patterns in human behavior during a pandemic. Here are the impacts this virtual plague had on real life. The virtual virus had a strong real life social and emotional impact on players. It made them learn what it's like to be in pandemic and take on certain personas to really experience it. The pandemic created feelings such as fear, empathy, power, and more within the players. Some of them took it upon themselves to fill certain roles. Priests and shamans would heal the infected and low-level players, consciously risking themselves in the process, acting as doctors in real life. Other players would purposely contract a disease or make their pets and minions do so, teleport to populated cities, and intentionally spread the disease. Low-level players were the major victims in this case as they barely had enough resources and health to protect them from the impact, mimicking the weak in the real life. This caused massive frustrations within players and countless complaints to Blizzard because every time a player dies or takes damage, the durability and the quality of their armor goes down as well as resources. So it also made gameplay pretty hard when people are out there trying to kill you. The plague also allowed Epidolomus to consider the human factor of a pandemic that mathematical models could not pick up on. Epidolomus Nieder Pfefferman found that what she called the stupid factor. Stupid factors when players would hear about the pandemic and log into the server in order just to see what it's all about. This resulted in them getting infected, spreading the infection further, increasing mortality rates. This is really relevant in real life because when you hear something's going down, you're going to want to check it out. Nina also explains that hunters' pets and warlocks' minions acted as the role of vermin during outbreaks. They're considered the rats, mosquitoes, and fleas that ultimately released malaria, bubonic plague, and Lyme disease. That got really sad. Another important factor is transportation. When players would teleport to different cities, those mimic the actions of infected people boarding flights or boats to other cities and infecting others. An example is the SARS disease. Normally, these actions were regularly justified by players wanting to complete their quests and get the rewards, mimicking those people who go to work with the flu or such and risk spreading it for the economic factor. Nina also talked about the reactions of the players and how that affected the pandemic. Those who chose to use their healing powers to heal the infected were actually doing more harm than good. They were extending the course of the epidemic, keeping infected individuals alive long enough for them to continue spreading the disease. This is closely related to the works of hospitals and the desire for people to keep their loved ones alive as long as possible. On the other hand, those who would spread the disease on purpose in populated areas generated some security suspicions. These actions provided insight into how bioterrorists would exploit a pandemic. But death is not permanent in WoW, and all players really have to do is just play as their spirit and walk from the nearest graveyard back to their bodies, just click a resurrect button and voila, they're back alive. So the safe factor within the virtual world could affect the data because death is nothing more than just a minor annoyance. Some people are less cautious. Also, those players in the game are just having fun. They don't mean any harm, at least I think so. Therefore, those characters that intentionally spread the disease are not committed to large-scale domination or bioterrorism, but instead are just messing around. Overall, this plague created a portal, 
get it? Portal? For the concept of exploring real-life issues using a virtual world and how those results can be evaluated. It allowed WoW to have a social and cultural impact on not just the gaming industry, but on its players and the world. Who knew a video game could do so much, huh? Well, thank you for watching.